Okay, so today's lecture is about LPRPG, which is our planner that was published in ICAPS 2008. And um, the reason it's called LPRPG is because it's got linear programming and it's got a relaxed planning graph. So LPRPG, it's part of our confusing acronym series. <coughs> so a little bit about it. Um, a forward chaining planner. So think, think FF. So forward chaining planner using an RPG-based heuristic. And we're only handling PDDL level two. So that is, we can handle numeric problems, but we can't handle temporal problems. There are some complex reasons why temporal problems are actually quite difficult to, to uh, combine into this framework. We may do that in the future, though. Um, the key feature of it is we have causal reasoning using the relaxed planning graph heuristic, and then we use a linear programming to solve the numeric part of the planning problem. Um, and the idea of this is basically linear programming has been around for a long time. It's very good at solving numeric problems. So why not make use of it in planning and combine the two together? So we're essentially using a relaxation heuristic. Um, good relaxation heuristics um, essentially simplify the problem in some way to make them easier to solve. So it's an approximation to the original problem, which we can solve much more easily than the original problem and get an answer and then use that to guide us towards the goal of the original problem. And what we conventionally do in planning is we ignore negative action effects. So delete effects of actions, we ignore those and that is the FF um, heuristic. It's got a very good example of this, it's very widely used. Um, and also, this idea can be extended to numeric effects. So conceptually, we want to ignore negative numeric effects. Um, we can't do that quite so simply because a precondition might be that a number is less than a certain value. So it might be good to have something decreasing. So we don't want to really ignore decreasing numeric effects, but we want to ignore numeric effects that are bad to us in some way. So how do we do this? This is just a quick overview of metric of f. <coughs> we're extending it to numbers. We're still going to ignore negative propositional effects. We don't want to deal with those in our heuristic. It'd be too expensive to compute it. But also what we're going to do is for numeric effects, we're going to propagate upper and lower bounds on the numeric variables during constructing our relaxed planning graph. And this is the way we deal with the case that a low value or a high value might be what we want. We just keep the mo most it can be and the least it can be. And that, that tells us the range that our, our number can be in. So how do we compute these? Well, at each planning graph layer, take the sum of the positive effects of the actions, add that to the value it was in the previous layer, and that gives us the upper bound. The lower bound is, is similar, take the sum of the negative effects, all actions that have a, a um, negative effect on that fluent, and take that off it. And that gives us the lower bound at the next layer. And when we extract a relaxed plan, we choose a precondition, whose, well, choose actions whose preconditions lie within the bounds. So we can only apply an action if the value it requires in its precondition is within the bound, bounds at the given layer. And obviously, there's the usual helpful actions, which you'll see why I'm mentioning this later. So helpful actions are obviously actions that are applied in the first layer of the relaxed plan or all actions that achieve the same effect as those actions. And um, these become our helpful actions, which we use to put in search. <coughs> so here's our little running problem that we're going to be using through the lecture. There is a lorry at a store. And this MAP stands for material. So we have four units of material, one um, package at the store, um, no packages at the site, <coughs> no packages in the lorry, and the lorry's at the store. So this is our little problem, and our goal is going to be to get 
a number of packages at the at the other location, so at the site. So what happens if we build a relaxed planning graph for this? The initial bounds are, we know what the value is. We're told in the initial state, you've got four units of material, one, one package at the store, nothing at the site, nothing in the lorry. So we know the bounds tell us the exact value. So lower bound is four, upper bound is four for material, for example. So at the next layer, what can we do? We can produce. Now produce uses up one unit of material and produces one, um, one package, whatever are the things that we want are. So after we've done produce, the material can either be full because we could have not done anything, so that's its upper bound still, or it can be three if we've produced something, then we've taken down the amount of material by one. And this carries on the same for all the other things. So you see if we've got at the store one one, we can load onto the lorry, and the lorry then has the bounds zero to one. One if we loaded, zero if we did nothing. And then we carry on propagating. These are the next actions that are applicable at this layer. You notice there's some more. We can now unload at the store, or we can unload at the site. You notice we've got these propositional effects from the drive action still. <coughs> So now we get a new set of bounds. Um, we can have done nothing, so we've got four material, or we can have produced twice, so we've got two material. Um, the lorry has minus two to two, because here it's in zero to one, and we can have unloaded it at the store or unloaded it at the site, so we can take two off that, and that's if it was its lower bound, we now have minus two. Um, and its upper bound is two because if we loaded there and we loaded again here, we get two. So that's how we do the bound propagation. We've got one more layer. Again, it's a similar story. <coughs> and you see, we get to the end and our goal is actually to have two packages at the site. And we've got that here so we can stop expanding the relaxed planning graph. So that's essentially how FF does its search. Add up what you can get to produce things take off what you can get to consume things, and that gives you your bound.